welcome to Triangle Congruent. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Congruent means the same sides and the same angles. Both of those have to be the same in order for the triangles to be congruent. We also know that if they're congruent, there is a sequence of transformations that maps one onto another. We can take one triangle and reflect it and turn it and flip it and slide it, and they would match up. So the converse of that is true. If you can do all that stuff and you can move it around to make it match, then they must be congruent. So anytime you have triangles that you're like, hey, I found a way that this can work, that proves that they're congruent. Okay? There's also some shortcuts here. There's five triangle congruence theorems that give us a shortcut. The first is this. If you look here, these two triangles have the same side, the same side, the same side. If all three sides are the same, this is called side, side, side. And that's what happens if all three pairs of corresponding sides are congruent. That's enough. Anytime the three sides are congruent, we would be able to twist it and make one map on top of the other. So we don't even need to know anything about the angles. That's enough to prove they're congruent. The second one is if we have equal sides and an angle that's in between those equal sides. So that's called side, angle, side. Notice that the angle is in between the two sides. And that's when we have two pairs of corresponding sides are congruent and the angles between them are congruent. So these are fine and the one in between is also good. That's enough to know that, hey, we will be able to turn this and slide it and it'll map one on top of another. So if we have side, angle, side, that's enough to prove that they're congruent. The third one is where we have two angles and an equal side in between those. So that's called angle, side, angle. Two pairs of corresponding angles are congruent, and the corresponding sides between them are congruent. If that's the case, then triangles are congruent. The fourth one is where we don't have something on the inside, we actually have one side on the outside. So we've got two angles that are the same, and a side over here that's not in between them. This would also still work. Because if these two angles, here's the reason, if these two angles are the same, don't these angles have to be the same also? And then really we still have angle, angle, side, which, or angle, side, angle, which we had before. But that's why this is enough if we just have angle, angle, and a side that's on the outside, that's still enough to prove they're congruent. Two pairs of corresponding angles and a pair of corresponding sides. The last one is for a special triangle. What you find different about this triangle than all the rest of the examples is that we've got right angles, so these are called right triangles. If you have a right triangle, it will have a hypotenuse and two legs, right? Well, in a right triangle, if the hypotenuse is the same and one of the legs is the same, that's enough because then the third one would have to be the same because a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and you could figure out that third side, so really we'd have side, side, side. But if you ever see a right triangle, hypotenuse leg is enough. This is called hypotenuse leg, and it says if the hypotenuse and one leg of one right triangle is congruent, then the triangles are congruent. That's enough. There are five congruence theorems here. You'll be responsible to know all five and be able to use them in a bunch of different scenarios. Have a great day.